Hello, everyone. This is John Forrester, and I'm back for another Slice of GTD Life interview, this time with Dave Edwards. Hi, Dave. Hey, how you doing, John? Good to be with you. Thank you. I'm glad to see you. We've talked on email quite a bit, but it's great to have a pretty much face-to-face -face conversation or what passes exactly. for that these days. Exactly. Well, I'm just going to turn it over to you at first and have you tell folks um, who you are, where you are, what you used to do if you want to, what you're <laughs> leaning into. And I'd mostly like to have us get a chance to talk more about what you're you're currently doing. Um, I'll just tee it up by saying Dave's been a longtime GTD practitioner and um, he he recently emailed me and said he was going to retire. Next thing I know, I'm finding out about this whole new career he's he's on too. So <laughs> if he's one of those people who may need to threaten to retire several times before it takes. Well, I, I, I think that's probably true, you know. Well, um, uh, John, it's it's just really an honor to be to be with you because I watch so many of these and, and the thought of being on one of these uh, slice of lives um, uh, is uh, is a real honor. Uh, I am uh, I am in Franklin, Wisconsin, which is a suburb of Milwaukee. Uh, here in southeastern Wisconsin, where we have four seasons. Uh, the other day it was 75 and today's 40. So, you know, it, that's the way it kind of works. Mm -hmm. um, my career started as a journalist. Uh, I was uh, a reporter for both radio and television. I was an anchor for an all-news radio station. And then um, for about 30 plus years, I was the uh, general manager of the NPR public radio station here in Milwaukee. Um, and as you're right, I, I retired in January of 2020, uh, but I knew I would never be happy with a sort of traditional retirement. I, I, I always said, I don't think it's healthy for a person to go from 100 miles an hour to 10 miles an hour. And I, and I knew there, was, there were other things that I wanted to do, but they probably didn't involve uh, getting up at 6.30 in the morning and working long days and uh, yeah. dealing with uh, people and all those kinds of yeah. things. And so, one other thing, the the general manager of the station sounds like a more than full time job, but for several years you were also going to Washington once a week, once every two weeks, something like that. Yeah, well, uh, there were times where it was at least once a week. Uh, I was um, I started out. Uh, I was on the NPR board of directors for uh, seven years, hmm. and uh, the last uh, two and a half years I was the the board uh, chair. And unfortunately, the day I took the gavel was a day of some significant problems that faced the company. Oh. And so I had two very tumultuous, controversial years where, you know, I was interviewed by the New York Times. And I'm, I'm, I was always used to being the interviewer. I never was <laughs> used to being interviewed. But, I, but it, it, you're right. I mean, I was going back and forth from Milwaukee to Washington, D.C. On, on about a weekly basis. And uh, uh, actually, that... That um, that situation was really part of my GTD story uh, <laughs> it, it, because that's really when I realized that I had to get very serious about being productive because now I had really two full time jobs and, uh, and 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 so that was part of it. So we we can talk about that later uh, if if you want. So I when I retired. I decided I wanted to kind of give back not only to my industry, but to but to others in the, in the nonprofit sector. And so I, I formed David, Dave Edwards Media, and uh, I'm, uh, I'm providing some executive coaching. I'm doing some consulting with uh, nonprofit organizations. Um, I'm teaching two classes from Marquette University, one in uh, journalism and the other one in uh, ethics. And I'm also teaching a class in strategic planning and professional communications for Alverno College in Milwaukee. Um, so that's been that's been very interesting because I found that I really have a love for teaching. Um, but uh, as part of my giving back to my industry, uh, one of my first big projects was I wrote a book uh, called The Public Media Manager's Handbook. Uh, don't worry, it'll never be on the New York Times bestseller list, but I'm, I'm told that it has... Uh, helped a lot of people in public media, and so I'm grateful for that. And I'm actually working on another book right now. This one is a broader concept. This is uh, the tentative title is Pathway to Leadership, and I think that'll be um, uh, for uh, for anybody who who is interested in in being a leader in their field. And 
uh, God willing, that'll be out in early 2021. So, um, you know, I've been, I've been uh, moving along. And in addition to that, uh, my wife and I have four young grandchildren, two of whom we watch almost every day. In fact, if you hear any fighting or yelling, it's probably two of them uh, downstairs. Uh, and I'm having a blast with them. So, you know, it keeps me off the streets. Uh, you sound like you're just as busy as you were when you were holding down two full-time jobs. <laughs> I'm having a lot of fun. Uh, right. I really am. I'm, I'm very blessed. And, uh, and so I'm just, I'm just very happy. I've always been curious what happens when somebody who is so into GTD the way you are goes from uh, one job to another or into sort of retiring, maybe not fully retiring. And did, did your system change? Did how you approach things change at all or everything just the way it was? Um, you know, it, it, it didn't change very much. I mean, I think that the, 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 it, this is a small point, but I think that the thing that I quickly realized was that I didn't need all the contexts that I had for all of the projects and things I was tracking because right. basically where I'm sitting is where I do the majority of my work. And so mm -hmm. really the only context I have is really at home and at the computer. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, I, I I don't do very much out of this little realm. So that's probably uh, been the only thing. I, maybe if I would have retired more traditionally, uh, you know, I wouldn't need all of the systems that I have in place. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so they've just kind of shifted, uh, but, uh, but they're still very, very helpful for me to keep everything organized. Are you still using Evernote as a primary part of your system? Yes, I'm, I, that is still a huge part of, of my system. Uh, I gravitated to that uh, quite a few years ago, and it's, it's, it's just key. Um, you know, you were talking about uh, when I was going back and forth to Washington, and that's when I really realized that I needed to move from a, a, a paper system to something that was really all digital. Mm. Uh, and that included not only for my lists, but also um, just for all the reference material and all of the meeting notes and everything else that I had. So, because what I realized was I had a very robust system that was based on paper and file folders. And that's just the way I always operated for mm -hmm. you know, 20, 25 years. But when I was traveling to Washington, what I realized was when I would be in Washington, inevitably I would need something that was back in my, my office in Milwaukee. Yeah. Yeah. When I was in Milwaukee, I needed something that was back in Washington, D.C., and that was just mm -hmm. absolutely crazy. Yeah, frustrating. I also, oh, very, very frustrating. And then for a while, I just tried packing like everything I could think of in my briefcase and carrying it back and forth. And the only thing you happen happens when you do that is shoulder pain. You know, I mean, there really isn't. Much you read my mind. I was going to say, did you have oh. one of those rolling like an accountant's heavy duty file that yeah. I could have, and people suggested it. But um, so I had a revelation in that. Um, uh, long about that time, uh, our son uh, tore his ACL, and he was having surgery. And we were in the waiting room, and I was sitting there with my wife and his wife, uh, waiting for him to, be, uh, to come out of surgery. And I noticed that my daughter-in-law was like busy typing away and she was just doing that. And I said to her, are you doing your email? She said, oh no, I've, I've got all my notes here. Now, how do you have all of your notes? You're not in your office. And she showed me one note, the Microsoft product. Right, right. And I looked at that and I went, that's what I need. And so I started developing my, all of my notes, everything migrated digitally into one note. Mm -hmm. And then eventually, when I found Evernote, I just found it to be a little bit more flexible for me. So I moved everything over there. But uh, yeah, I'm still, um, even now, I'm still mostly digital for work stuff. I'm uh, paper-based for a lot of personal things, you know, insurance policies and mm -hmm. all of those kinds of things are still in a file cabinet next to me. But I would say that all of the professional stuff that I do is is buried in Evernote. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Um, they did, I think they did an upgrade recently and as, did that go smoothly for you or are you one of the people who has found that you, there are new annoyances or? Well, you know, anytime there's change, you know, you, you, you've got to adapt and, yeah. and uh, Evernote evolved in a very strange way because they ad kept adding features to different platforms. So every mm. platform was different. Your iPhone platform was different than your, you know, your desktop. 
and Android was different. And so finally they pulled it all together. And, uh, but I really haven't had any problems with oh, it. Good. Um, and I think they'll work the bugs out of it. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's still a, a very powerful app as far as I'm concerned. Good, good. All right. Well, I, I, I knew you were very fond of it and I wasn't, wasn't expecting that you'd say you had jumped off that ship, but just wanted to check with you and see, because I've yeah. been reading some forum posts about the uh, Evernote upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. And actually those posts are the one that scared me. Uh, <laughs> I was really nervous when I started reading those, but uh, you know, so far knocking on wood, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's not failed me. Ah, good, good. All right. So you're back in the waiting room and you've realized that you can have digital notebooks instead of those file folders. And did you pretty much immediately start transitioning into using uh, OneNote and having a portable system that way? Uh, yeah. I mean, it was gradual. You can't, you can't migrate overnight uh, because I had to scan some documents in. And, and so what I really decided to do was I was going forwards, not backwards. Mm. Uh, that I realized that, you know, as of that moment, anything new would go into my digital system. Mm-hmm. And uh, so if I was going to a meeting in Washington where I needed certain items that were on paper, well, then I'd have to scan them into the system. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for the most part, uh, for a while, I was running two different systems. But uh, gradually over time, uh, I was able to, uh, you know, pretty much lock up the file cabinets and, and, huh. and move forward as it pertains to uh, uh, my professional environment. And even now, one of the things that I like about um, using Evernote, as I say, I'm, I'm writing another book. And so all of my research is in Evernote. Mm-hmm. And as I'm writing drafts, it's all in Evernote. And so I can access it wherever I am, whenever I am, but I can also input new data very simply into Evernote and just tag it uh, mm-hmm. associated with this book project. Mm. Sounds like a good system. Yeah. So far, um, so good. All right. All right. Uh, and let's see, how many years were you on OneNote before you switched? Was that Oh, it was probably a, maybe a year or two. Oh, okay. Uh, I, I, I really made the switch because, uh, and I think OneNote is a tremendous product. Don't get me wrong. I, uh, at that time, Evernote's cloud-based service was simpler to use. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I liked that Evernote was just a blank piece of paper. There really were no parameters. Mm-hmm. And so for me, it allowed me to kind of think through and develop my own system as opposed to following the system of, um, of sort of books and pages that uh, Microsoft OneNote has. I still yeah. think it's a very good system, but for me, now that I've migrated so deeply in Evernote and there's so much material there, I, I can't see myself ever moving away. Mm-hmm. Well, I didn't, I, I knew you'd been in Evernote for a long time, but I, I didn't realize that you had started in OneNote and, and, and then switched over. Yeah. Right, mm-hmm. right. Okay. Um, what else do you use for your system these days for calendar, email, things like that? Sure. Um, well, I'm a, I'm a Mac person. So, mm-hmm. uh, you know, I use, uh, uh, iCalendar. Uh, that's a big part of my system. Uh, all of my, uh, projects and, uh, action items are stored in, uh, never, uh, Nirvana HQ. Mm-hmm. Uh, for a while, I tried to set up a system in Evernote where I could keep all of my action items and, and, and lists in there. But um, quite honestly, I just found that uh, Nirvana, because it's really set up in many respects to accommodate GTD, Mm -hmm. uh, it's just worked out so well for me. I can do most of it in Evernote, but they've just got some really nice features in Nirvana. And um, I know a lot of people complain that uh, Nirvana has not done a lot of upgrades. Uh, It's pretty basic system, and it's pretty much the same way as it was five years ago. But I got to tell you, you know, I, I don't need a lot of bells and whistles. Uh, it, it does the basic core and I can do projects and action items and I can do contexts and what more do I need? <laughs> yeah, I think we've all gotten used to thinking that somehow if software isn't getting some kind of an update on a regular basis, that it's falling behind. But if it was well designed to begin with, then maybe there's nothing to fall behind on. Yeah, and, and, and in some respects, I wish I could keep it all in Evernote uh, just so it would all be in one place, but it's just not been a hassle. Uh, and, I, um, and I've just gotten used to having a couple of systems. So I, mean, it, it, I don't think there's any one system that accommodates everything for everyone. First of all, we approach our systems differently. 
Um, and so, you know, there's, there's a component there where that's important to me. Um, Dropbox is important to me for other things, particularly backups and, and the other things. Uh, you know, WordPress I use uh, for the website and for other mm. things. Uh, Calendly uh, is, has become a, a savior to me. Uh, now that I no longer have an administrative assistant who can track all of my meetings for me, I had mm -hmm. the greatest administrative assistant in the world, and it was just so oh. hard to to uh, no longer work with her. But now, if people want to meet with me, I can just give them a link to Calendly, and uh, they they can see when I'm available and uh, slot in a meeting. And and so for me, that's been a that's been a a, a godsend. Yeah, yeah. Um, and some of the other things I use, um, uh, you know, I, I, I still use my note taker wallet, uh, which, uh, you know, even though I'm digital, I use Siri a lot when I've got to put something into my system when I'm driving in the car. Mm -hmm. But if I'm, you know, in a meeting or having lunch with you pre COVID days, I always <laughs> felt it weird to take out my phone and write something down. So this way I can mm -hmm. just take out my wallet, write a note and I can process it later. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much basically what I use. I, I think the only other thing that has become key to my system are three by five cards. Oh, in what way? How do you use those? Well, uh, uh, every day, uh, not so much now that I'm, as I say, I'm pretty much based here. But my, um, I try to not only do weekly reviews, but I would do nightly reviews to kind of get an idea of what my next day would look at. And I would mm -hmm. take a look at my project list. I would take a look at my calendar. But then I realized that once I got started with the day, the world keeps happening and I get distracted. And this way, I would always take a three by five card and I would list three or four things that I really want to accomplish. Mm -hmm. and I would put it in my shirt pocket and this was like my constant reminder of what I sort of promised myself that I was going to, I was going to do. Yep. It also served another purpose because on the flip side of the card, I could make quick notes to myself if I wanted to add something to my master. Mm -hmm. list. So I said, you know, the invention of the three by five card has really helped keep me productive as well. Yeah. Especially since it fits in a pocket. It's perfect. Yes. Yeah. Which I think was the original design of the Palm Pilot. Uh, oh, that it had to fit in a shirt pocket. You know, I still have my old Palm Pilot and I, it's in wow. a box and I have it stashed away. And of course it doesn't work, but it just reminds me of where we all started. And I remember yeah. just how enamored I was of that device. And to think now that was like a toy by comparison to the tools that we now have. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it's true that what you can do with a smartphone now is more than what you could do with a computer when the Palm Pilot came out. And, and it's more powerful than the computer yeah. you had 10 years ago. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty amazing. Uh, how about for email? Are you just using the Mac Mail yeah. program? Okay, yeah. 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 All right. I, was using, uh, I was using Outlook uh, when, I was, uh, when I was working full-time, but um, now my email is, it's a, it's a lot, it's a simpler system. Mm. Yeah. Because I can still have my client folders, and and but that's pretty much it. And I'm a big, I'm a big proponent of using search mm -hmm. as opposed to overbuilding my email program. Okay, yeah, uh, that's that's a debate that goes on, and uh, most people are either solidly on one side or the other, and for for completely valid reasons that just works better one way or the other for them. I'm just too lazy to develop all these uh, uh, folder systems. <laughs> yeah. Uh, your three by five card reminds me of uh, a lower tech version of what's getting built into more and more software in Microsoft to do. It would be called my day um, in a no Lotus notes program. I used. it's called the today view where you can say, these are the distilled items from the many on my lists that I want to be sure I keep focused on today. And, in your shirt pocket, it just seems like a, a, it's a very smart way to do it. It may seem like it's low tech, but it's, it's also just as smart as say putting your briefcase in front of the front door so that you can't get out without it. Yeah, no, that's really true. And, and, uh, and, and I've always, people have asked me like, you know, you're, you're, you're Mr. Tech, you like the gadgets. I mean, why are you doing that? And it's, and it's because it forces me every day or every mm -hmm. evening um, to pull out a new card 
to review all of my lists. It mm -hmm. takes me 15 minutes to do this yeah. and just write down three or four items. There are some days I don't get all three or four done. Um, and there are some days where I get all three or four done and I go back to my list and see if I can, uh, um, mm -hmm. you know, grab another one. Right. But uh, it's just it's just that constant reminder. And it's like a promise I made to myself that I'm going to really mm -hmm. work hard to get these things done. And if I look at my calendar and I'm booked up with meetings, I might only write down two things that I'm going to get done that day. Ah, so you actually my... take your calendar into account when you're making that Absolutely. list. Absolutely. And I don't beat myself up if if I could only put one or two items on the list. If that's just the way the day works. Mm -hmm. uh, but I also try to build into my calendar uh, work time so that I know that every day or maybe every other day, I'm going to have a block of time where it's like, Katie barred the door. I'm going to I'm going to really get work done today. OK. And is that uh, part of how you're writing the next book is setting out time where you have. Very much so. Very, very dedicated much. writing time. Yeah, it's really true. I mean, it, I know this sounds crazy, but if you looked at my calendar, uh, I've got time blocked out for um, for doing my consulting work and meeting with people over Zoom. I've got time blocked out to play with the grandkids. I mean, there are oh, certain, good. there are certain times of the day when when you know they they need grandpa and and I'm available. Mm -hmm. uh, my grandson is in uh, 4K and. Uh, and I'm his Uber driver, so that's on my calendar. But I do carve out blocks of time where it's like I'm closing the door and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to work on a couple of thousand words or I'm going to edit or I'm going to do something like that. Mm -hmm. Because I found in retirement, uh, <laughs> your day can zip by pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and you really, I think I almost need more discipline now than I did when I worked in an environment where I would, I had like a lot of meetings and then I had times mm -hmm. in between, I think my life was more structured. And I have found since I left that job that I have to be, I have to put more structure into my life. Otherwise I'm, it's just too easy to not do things. Mm -hmm. Especially with a temptation, like the grandkids just on the other side of the door. That, oh yeah. That you could get, why would I want to work on something <laughs> like this that requires focus and discipline when I can go out there and play? But once in a while, I'll get a little knock on the door and uh, my grandson will come and say, Grandpa, can I play on your computer or can you play baseball? So, you know, those are the special times. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, what? Uh, tell us some other things that you do that are maybe modifications of GTD. Um, I always find it funny when people think that there's some canonical GTD and anything they modify it is, is heresy. But um what what do you do that's anything different than the usual approach? Well, you know, I'm really glad you said that because uh, when I first read the book, um, I felt that it was kind of like a Bible that I needed to mm. just kind of implement. And, and there were certain elements of it that just didn't feel right. And it took me longer to kind of figure out. And I, and I remember thinking at one point, man, if, if David ever saw this, he would not be happy. But then I realized uh, that A, David has not seen me. And second of all, uh, that we all need to take, those are principles and we all have to take them into our lives. So there are some things that I'm, I am very religious about. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I don't know if you can see, I mean, I've got my, my inbox. My, I can see uh, it. Move the camera here. I've got an yep. inbox. I've got my action support. This this file is actually book related stuff. So uh -huh. after I write a chapter, I print it because I edit better on paper than I do on a screen. Uh -huh. And this is like an outbox. And and so those are the, the those are the basic core elements. I have folders sitting next to me of projects that I'm working on. I think that the thing that I've I've probably modified the most. Well, certainly now, as I say, I don't really have context, um, but I. Um, I employ the uh, Eisenhower method for mm -hmm. reviewing all of my tasks. And uh, I know that David doesn't write about that in his book. I like what David has said about, you know, prioritizing what you're going to do. And I know there's a, a webinar on that on GTD Connect, which I found very helpful. Mm. But the, the simplest system for me is the, is the matrix of, of, uh, of Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. it forces you, I, I don't code my items, you know, mm -hmm. like the old Filofax or any of those kinds of systems. Um, but when I'm looking, when I'm doing my weekly review, it's kind of helpful for me to look at all of those items 
in that context? What mm-hmm. must I get done? What can you know I delegate? Mm-hmm. What? Wait a minute, I have nobody to delegate to anymore. <laughs> um, There's a big change. <laughs> you missed that. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it really helps me to put a slightly different perspective on the, mm-hmm. on the items. So that is probably the you know the the, the biggest departure. Uh, that I've made from from the book. I also like the fact that when um, when uh, your company and David reissued the the the, the re the, the second version of GTD, it it built into a greater understanding of the digital capacity and uh, and how systems can be used. and And I found that to be very helpful. But mm-hmm. as I say, I mean, I'm heavily invested in Evernote and other things, which, uh, you know, are so maybe on the fringes of GTD, but boy, I'll mm-hmm. tell you, they, they really helped me out a lot. Oh, good, good. All right. So another question I often ask is if, how would you suggest somebody new to GTD get started? What would you warn them to avoid or, or advise them to most definitely do any advice there? Well, I'm going to presume that, uh, anyone new would read the book. And, uh, and, I, and I would suggest that they um, uh, subscribe to or at least try GTD Connect uh, because I think that between the book, the forums, um, the webinars, the seminars, I think it's a good uh, framework for getting started. Uh, and Folks, that was not a paid endorsement. <laughs> he, he volunteered that. I had no idea he was going to say it. But thank, no, thank it, you. It's true. And, and I think that, as I told you before we started recording, I think that GTD Connect has become much more robust through your efforts and David's efforts and that of a lot of other people, which I think is very helpful. Because I think getting started can be very overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And um, see, I, I kind of felt the need to do this because of a transition that I had in my life much earlier as a reporter. Um, your focus is on what you're covering today. Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, that story's gone. You throw your notes away and you move on to the next thing the next day. When I became a manager, I realized that there was much more coming at me that I had to remember, that I had to keep track of. And that's what it really dawned on me that I was never taught hmm. how to do that. I mean, they don't teach you that in school, you know? Um, and I was never the most organized person when I was in school. Um, God bless my mom. She tried to get me to be more organized and focused, but it didn't take. Huh. But when I was in that professional role, I started reading, you know, every productivity book that I could find, mm. to every productivity guru I could find. And for a while there, I was just taking little bits and pieces from everybody and try to cobble together something that would work. Mm-hmm. When I read David's book, um, it was it was like David was lecturing to me. Mm-hmm. It was really talking to me. And I really think that anybody who's starting out, that's the basis. Start slow. Don't be afraid to not implement everything exactly the way it's in the book. And maybe don't even implement everything all at once. Hmm. I think mm-hmm. taking it slow is probably the best way because otherwise you can get too easily uh, disgruntled mm-hmm. and frustrated mm-hmm. and then just kind of give up on the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I think that take it slow, but, but have a process and have, and surround yourself with people who can help you, I think is, uh, is, is, is part of the success. Hmm. That's very good advice, especially because if somebody's just starting out, they're, they're, going to be trying to form new habits, kind of change the way the nerves run and, and approach things in a different way. Right. And trying to do all of that at once might might end up pushing them back. Yeah. And, 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 and the other part of that is to stick with a system. Hmm. Um, I think early on, I was like continually letting my system evolve and trying different things. Um, I was convinced for a long time that, that David's advice on um, um, next actions and all of that was not helpful to me. And so like, I can't tell you the number of weekends that I spent redesigning my system hmm. and, and all that it was, it ultimately was a very frustrating situation for me because I was always tinkering, but then I'd have to copy things and I'd have to do things. Hmm. I'd lose track of other things. 
And I finally realized, look, I'm going to stick with this system until mm -hmm. it no longer works for me. And that's why I haven't really messed around with a lot of new products that are out there because this one works. And yeah, I could try Nosby. I could try a lot of other things, which I know are wonderful systems, but I don't feel the need. And I know I'll only get frustrated <laughs> if I start playing around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think since I've known you, you've, you've been very stable and you're, I haven't heard you report that you're one of those people who's constantly trying out new software and all that kind of thing. And I know there are people that just pretty much try whatever new comes along, hoping to yeah. find a better tool. That's not to say that I haven't downloaded a lot of programs just to see what they are and, and, and gone online and looked at a lot of different services and things because I'm, I'm a techie and so I've got to mm -hmm. kick the tire on a lot of stuff, but it would have to be truly spectacular uh, to get me to want to move because I know how much effort it is to really move and redesign a system. Yeah, and if you've got something that's working for you, you don't have to think about the system. It just works and you can do your work without having to think about, well, was that in a notebook or was it in a paper file? You, yeah, and, and, and to be honest with you, even now, in, in what I'm doing now with the consulting and, and uh, uh, coaching and things like that, I probably could go back to a paper-based system hmm. uh, and, and go back to everything the way I had done it, you know, a long, long, long time ago. Um, but um, it's working, so mm -hmm. why change mm -hmm. it? Yep. And I have an iPad, so basically if I go meet with a client, which I haven't done in a long time, obviously, because of COVID... But if I go meet with a client, I open up my iPad, I have all my notes there. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I haven't, I really haven't had the need to change. Yeah, yeah. Well, as far as I know, there have been no significant upgrades to paper since you were on a paper-based system. <laughs> but we've covered most of what I had in mind to cover, and I just want to open it up to you and say anything else you'd like to add. Well, the only other thing that in my, in my system that I have found very helpful is that I have really built up a lot of templates. Hmm. Uh, and, um, and I just don't like doing and writing things over and over again. Um, so, you know, when, when somebody emails me and inquires about services that I offer in my consulting business, I now have a standard template response to that. Uh, if somebody asks for, um, uh, my bio, that's a very simple response to that. And I've been, um, trying text expander. Mm -hmm. uh, as a as a vehicle for doing that, I was I was playing around with macros that I wrote, but um, I, I think Text Expander seems to be doing everything that that I wanted to do, and and uh, and I have found that it to save me a lot of time. I mean, just simple things. You go online and somebody asks for your address, and you think about how many times you type your address over and over again. Mm -hmm. Now I can hit two keys and my address appears on the screen. Yeah, uh, that is that's probably the 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 newest and thing that I'm most excited about that you know is kind of an offshoot of all of my productivity systems but I think it's working uh, I think it's working very well I've used text expander since I well I've been on a Mac various times over many years but the most recent time I got back on a Mac was in 2013 and I started using text expander in the last seven years I can't tell you how many hours that saved me to use it and uh, sometimes I'll even delay sending an email because somebody would probably say, wait a minute, he can't have replied five paragraphs in one minute and not made typos. And But yeah. I use Text Expander a lot, and I think your use of templates is really smart. Well, I, I, I learned this a long time ago because when I was uh, general manager of the radio station, we would get listener uh, emails all the time, and they were pretty much the same thing. Uh, they were asking the same questions or they were complaining about the same mm -hmm. sort of things. And I just got tired of writing it all over again. And, uh, and so that's really where I got into it. But uh, it has just saved me a, a lot of energy and a lot of typing. All right. Well, I, I have sure enjoyed talking with you. Um... Well, I appreciate that you did, uh, John. I've, I've been a fan of yours and, and of all the people uh, within the organization. And, you know, I also want to thank the people that uh, have participated in these sessions with you before, because uh, I've learned a lot from them. And, uh, you know, this kind of goes back to what I was saying earlier about uh, having support, having a support mm -hmm. system. Um, my support system 
are the people that I'm meeting that you're introducing me to. Hmm. And, and I remember a, a number of years ago, and I'm sorry, I cannot remember the gentleman's name, uh, but you had interviewed him. And uh, he, I mean, literally, I had to stop listening because I needed a pen and paper to start writing down some of the things he said, because they just talked to me. And, uh, mm-hmm. and I've learned so much from the people that have, that have participated. And I learned so much from people on the forums. I, mm-hmm. I lurk more in the forums than I post, but there are some really smart people there. And I'm, I'm always learning from others. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's a good attitude to take. That'll keep us both young. That, <laughs> I like that. Yeah. I hope so. Would you tell us the URL of your website and any other information about how folks can get in touch with you if they want to find out more and anything else you'd like to say? Sure. I'd love it if people would check out the website if they have any questions, if I can help people uh, or um, or just, uh, you know, want to say hi. Uh, My uh, website is DaveEdwardsMedia.com. And uh, and if you go there, you'll find that I uh, uh, information about what I'm doing, but also I write a blog. Uh, which uh, focuses on management, leadership, and productivity issues. Uh, And uh, I've been posting videos, and I've been posting a lot of things to that. So if somebody might might benefit from that, there's also a contact me form. Uh, send Send a note, say hi. I also have a weekly free management newsletter that I send out. You can sign up for that. I would just love to meet more GTDers that way. Sounds good. Sounds very good. All right. Well, thank you again. And um, I'll get this posted as soon as possible. Send you a link to it. John, thank you very much. This really has been a lot of fun for me.